In the years 1998 and 1999, there's been a series of cases of missing children in the Zachodnie-Pomorskie Voivodeship. Four boys of the same age and from the same region go missing without a trace. All of these cases were fairly similar to each other, uh, actually surprisingly very similar to each other, and they could be also linked to the, to the case of Mateusz, which we already covered on this channel. All of these cases were unexplained, but all the clues lead to a serial killer. Guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Per and I hope that you're all doing great. In today's video, like I said, we're going to be covering the story of the four boys that are missing without trace. If you guys like this kind of content, make sure to leave a like and a subscribe. You can also check out the playlist, my true crime playlist just here. Yeah, it would be awesome if you guys would leave a subscribe because only 80% of people that watch my videos actually subscribe. So that would be awesome if you could leave a subscribe. Anyways, without further ado, let's get straight into the story. The disappearances take place in Wobez, Staredravsko and the Rev. Let's take a look at the first case which happened first. Wobez is a small town in the Zachodnie-Pomorsky region. Right now, it only has around 10,000 people that live in there. Um, back in the day, it was a lot less. This is where the 15-year-old Janusz Asminian grew up and went missing. On the 21st of March 1998, around 6 p.m., Janusz left his house to go outside with his friends to the nearby river called Drega. The teenagers were drinking. He was fairly young, uh, 15, and already drinking alcohol. But I guess at that time in Poland, it was like a fairly normal thing to do, I guess. So they stayed at that river for a while. After they were done, uh, they decided to go to the local club and Janusz was actually uh, too drunk to go with them so the the group of teenagers decided to leave him um, just by himself by the river um, drunk thinking that he will make his way home um, and they just went off to the club and I think we can all see where this is going um, Janusz did not make it back um, home that day so the family got worried that he was not returning home and they notified the police um, the police then asked the teenagers where is the last time they seen him. So they pointed the police to the place where they were at. However, there was nothing there, no signs of him being there. Later on, further down the river, they found neatly folded up clothes that belonged to Janusz. It was speculated that the 15-year-old maybe tried to somehow sober up by going into the river. That's what the police said. I don't know how that would help. And the police basically just said that he drowned in that river. Except for the crows, there was no body found or any other evidence of Janusz. And the police used search dogs to look for his body, but the dogs would start at the river and they would uh, and they would go towards the road. And at the road, the dogs would lose the track. That could indicate that he maybe got into a car um, you know, if the dogs are leading you to the road and then they lose the scent, it's most likely that he go into a car. So nonetheless, the police just said that he, he drowned. Um, in this case kind of reminds me a lot of the Mateusz case that we covered earlier on. Uh, you know, they were both next to the river. Uh, Mateusz was a lot younger though. Um, the police only found their clothes, again, neatly folded together, uh, which was which was interesting. Uh, and then again, no bodies were found in the Mateusz case or the case of Janusz. The police determined this case as drowning. And when the family and the friends took it to media and were making a lot of noise about this case, uh, the family started to receive a lot of calls, a lot of silent calls where no one would speak. But there was this one case where uh, actually someone called them and threatened them saying that if they continue putting this story into the media, uh, the same might happen to his brother. And that would be it for this case. Um, no other information, um, no bodies, no anything. Almost a year later, on the 1st of March 1999, there was another disappearance around 60 kilometers from the previous case in Wobez, and the town is called Stare Dravsko. Marek Paczkowski left his house around 10 a.m. Um, to go to his school. His school is seven kilometers away in another town called Chaplinek. He would travel the same way every day to school, but that day he never managed to get to school. Now, there is not a lot of information on this case. The only thing that is known is that he left for school and he was walking next to a nearby lake. The police again determined this case uh, as drowning, saying that he walked onto the ice of the lake um, and he fell in. However, I don't know how they came up with this theory as there was literally no information of of what happened to him again no cctv cameras at that time and no bodies were found again he vanished into thin air later on however there was an information from the local um, that lived around there and he said that he for sure saw this boy uh, get into the car however this information was neither confirmed nor denied the father of marek kept on searching for the boy but unfortunately after so many years 
um, there was still nothing found. And another month later, the history repeats itself. However, this time not only one uh, not only one person goes missing, but two boys go missing. A 15-year-old Wukar Sass and a 14-year-old Andrzej Ziemniak. The boys were at an educational center. It's a place where kids and teenagers get kind of sent when they're struggling at school. It's meant to help them with learning and socializing. Um, the boys would often write letters to their mothers saying that it's not really good in that education center. Uh, wouldn't specify what was happening, they just didn't like it. And on the 30th of March 1999, both of those boys uh, ran away, but they never made it home. There was instances of kids running away from the educational center before, however, they always made it home. Um, the educational center must have been pretty bad if they having kids run away from there so often. And after the boys ran away, there was no signs of them. That was the last day that they were seen. Uh, at first, there were talks of something bad happening um, at the educational center. We'll get to that in a second. Um, there was also speculations that they took a ferry to Sweden. Um, that kind of didn't, doesn't make really that much sense. And there's also the theory of them um, trying to hitchhike and one of the hitchhikers turning out to be a bad person, basically murdering them. Uh, now, just recently, there's been an article that was released uh, and a video where the mothers and the organization that helps people um, whenever someone goes missing and they got the permission to search through the whole area of the educational center and when they were digging up the ground they found a lot of human bones um i don't know why they would be there but that area was heavily armed during the world war ii so that could have been from there there were also bones found in the well and the most important fact is that they found a sweater um, a sweater that one of those boys was wearing, you can probably see that in the picture now. And that would pretty much confirm that something bad could have happened to those boys in that educational center. Now the bones were sent out to get DNA tested. Uh, I haven't seen any updates on that yet. So if I see any updates, I'll try to probably put it down in the comments. And yeah, the mothers of the two boys basically say that something bad was happening to them in that educational center and someone should basically pay for it. I'll link the video in the description if you want to see it it's in polish it doesn't have any captions so i think it's still interesting to watch if you want to see it and yet the families of these boys were missing their children for over 20 years now some keeping faith that their children will come back one day some already lost hope and all of these cases were within one year from 1998 to 1999 all of the cases take place in the same area you can travel the distance um, by car within two hours. All of them happened in March. All of the boys are same age, um, three of them being 15, one of them being 14. And again, these are just the speculations that go around on the internet. Be not connected together, but there is a lot of factors that link them together. And there's a lot of speculations on the internet about the theory of the serial killer. If it was a serial killer, um, you can probably see how there's, those cases are linked. He was most likely using a car um, to get around the area and he probably knew that he has to change his strategy so maybe that's where the the case of Mateusz comes in I don't know you guys let me know what you think in the comments below this was the story of the four boys missing without a trace let me know what you think if this was just a coincidence a series of unfortunate events or maybe they were linked and it was a serial killer like I said before please leave a like uh, and a subscribe you can check out the playlist check out some videos on the side here and yeah I'll see you guys in the next video